Hello, this is going to be a slightly different tutorial, as we're going to be doing animate. Oh my god. Now, uh, you could, you could, there's two ways you could get this. You could pirate it. Uh, like I very clearly do. I definitely do not pay for this. Nope. Do not. Nope. Because if I did, that would make me a heretic, right? Pff, no, I would never pay for Adobe products. Not me. So, you, you're looking at how to use the software, specifically for FNF. I bet you're confused about shit, because no one's clearly telling you how to do these things and you're like ah, I don't like these tutorials all these are ass I want new ones I want something that gets straight to the point well that's why I'm here for so you're gonna open up animate you're gonna create new and you're just gonna do the default selection okay so first things first you got this shit this is your timeline this is where you put your frames over here's the properties panel you can go up to uh, you know, different assets, the property of whatever tool you're using. In this case, I'm using the cursor. If I change it to the brush, you can see that it changes. Um, got the color. You can choose color here. That's actually something I did not know. Um, align, align shit. And then the library. This is where all your symbols and stuff go and stuff. Okay, so first things first. We're going to draw something. Uh, we're going to draw a head. Okay, we're going to draw a head. I'm right, just going to do a funny little character. He's going to be like, uh, like that. Okay. There, we have our character, uh, or at the head of our character. Okay, so, well, I guess what do we do now, right? Well, we gotta we gotta fill him in with something, else it's just gonna be a transparent PNG when it comes back. So we gotta change your color to something else, or you could just keep him white. I'm gonna do something different because, you know, we can just make him yellow. Yeah, sure. Now, how and you would do it in normal art normally, and how you should probably do it in anime too for uh, organization reasons is you would like make another layer you'd put it below that and then you would color on that and then you could color under it so you don't overlap the line right well in animate since this is vector based and not like uh, rasterization which means that these are all vectors these are all these lines are like with math and shit and they're not pixels we can take this button over here or up here and the tool panel click it and then dude paint behind now when I paint if this is in the same layer as the line layer it paints behind it <gasps> I know right it's crazy so uh, I'm gonna do that a little bit All right. uh, well actually I'm gonna do it on this layer so I'm just gonna go around I know I have very good draw skill Press K for the two paint bucket tool because this is Adobe, and then just click on that, and then uh, I guess color the eyes, whatever the hell you, <clears throat> whatever the hell you want. Oh, right, it's still on paint behind. Okay, so we got our eye. Cool. Now we're gonna, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to select both of these layers. We're going to right click and we're going to convert to a symbol. Alternatively, you can use F8. I'm just going to call this head. And now it's a symbol. Now, this is very important because with symbols, we can use tweens. And tweens are very good. But first, we've got to draw the rest of the body. So I'm just going to very quickly do that. Okay, so I'm going to name this head. It's good to organize your stuff. Uh, you're going to do folder, name this idle. Okay, put everything into the folder uh, head. We're just going to do body. I'm not trying to do anything uh, too intense, so. All right. Uh, let's see. Right, okay. Do the same thing for this. Actually, I'm going to do the paint behind method. Let's just make his body that orange. Sure. That's a very ugly color. Well, I could just guess uh, paint inside the line using that. There we go. Okay, cool. After I'm with that, I'm going to control a drag or just, I guess, just click the layer click the layer to select everything inside of it and then right click symbol body bam symbol okay cool um 
And I'm just going to make a quick arm with a microphone in it. Or something like an arm. If you ever do something where you're like, oh, I don't want this line here anymore, but it's already a symbol, and, oh, I, ca I can't edit my symbol, it won't let me. Well, you click the symbol, right-click it, edit selected, and then you can do it where you think it probably would be, which I didn't really think about, but that's okay, because this is just a tutorial. <laughs> I did it in the exact wrong place. Okay. That works. Arm, make it same color. No. Control, uh, shift, control, A to deselect. Control, A to select everything. No. Control, A to select everything. All right. Uh, pretty standard shortcuts. That's the head. I want the arm. Please. How the color selector works in Adobe is a bit weird. Normally it would be on, uh, let's see, it'd be something like this, like that's the default. Uh, I just go to here, I just go hue, and then I just select whatever color I want. Uh, these are good for like uh, selecting different kinds, like it's, they're really good for shading. These are really good for shading, so if you just like want to quick shade something, uh, just uh, press I to do the eyedropper tool, go to your color selector, it changes to R, and then, uh, or G, yeah, it changes to G, and then uh, just drag down and you'll have like your shaded color. I can't really show, wait, wait, it'd be like right there, but that's not what we're here for, is it? No, we're here to make sprites! Okay, cool. Um, so we have our thing. Uh, select the arm. Symbol. Arm. Alright. So, now we can start animating. Uh, so, t typically, uh, idle animation is going to be like uh, like 15 frames about. So, we're going to make a key. We're going to like 6 frames, 7 frames, and we're just going to uh, shift and then select these layers just like click one, then shift, then click the other one, and uh, we're going to place a keyframe. Now we have a copy of our thing here, and everything in between is going to be the same frame that the keyframe is uh, coming from. So, like, this is the original drawing, and this is, like, all the frames from that. So if I change something in the keyframe drawing, all of, everything will appear in those other frames, but they will not appear in the next keyframe. So, because that these are all symbols, what we can do is is make a tween. But first, we got to think about how our thing wants to move. Uh, so I'm just going to right-click a symbol, transform it, and I'm just going to... You can use the arrow keys to fine-tune your thing. Doesn't look great. That's fine. I'm going to squish the body a bit. Um, you can use the center point here, move it all the way to the bottom, and then drag it down to change the center point of the stretching. Fun facts. Just make sure that on the next keyframe, you put the center point at the same place as the beginning keyframe, else the tween's going to be a bit weird. Okay, so that's basically our idle animation. Again, it's not great, but that's okay. So then we select all of our keyframes here, the beginning ones. We right-click them. We go up to the top and do a create classic tween, and now it tweens them. Uh, ki kind of. Hang on. Something's not right. I do not know why. Hang on. No. That's weird. She just. What the hell? 
All right, so I guess the tween's being a little fucky right now. No clue why. Uh, but basically, the tween should normally work, and uh, it'll just do that. Uh, whoa, it's tweening for me. Don't know why this won't do it though. That makes no sense. All right, but then you're like, oh, but that that doesn't look that great. It looks a little stiff, doesn't it? Yes, it does, which is why we select inside the tween, the arrow, if you will. We go over to the Properties tab, Classic Ease, Ease Out, Circ. Then look at this. Instantly better. And if you want to make it a bit slower or you want to fine-tune it, that's easy. Just uh, select all these frames and then right-click them and uh, convert to keyframes and now these are all keyframes and we can select these and remove the classic tweens and the frames are still there so I can get rid of these and then select this keyframe and make new frames from that keyframe same thing here there's probably faster ways to do this It's so like I can kind of fix that head now a little bit. Um, if you want to see the frames that you're currently editing, like they want to, you want a reference of the frames that you're doing, of the previous frame, if you're editing the next frame. There we go. Onion skin. And uh, the one in front is how many layers you can see ahead, which is in green. One behind is how many layers you can see behind, which is in blue. I don't want to see anything behind me right now, so I'm just going to do that. And uh, actually, I do want to see something ahead of me. All right, cool. Now you you do basically do the same thing for like your uh, fucking left, down, up, and right animations and anything else. I guess this is just like a very basic tutorial. Um, so now that we have our idle animation, we select all of the frames that we had selected, and uh, we right click them and convert the layers to a symbol, and we call this idle. And now it's all one big animation. So we just then we just uh, click it, right click, generate sprite sheet. Uh, make sure your data format is Sparrow V2. This will generate an XML. And uh, we're just going to browse for something. Uh, export it. And now it should be in uh, wherever we exported it to. Yep, they are. The XML. And the sprite sheet. So that's a very, very, ba very basic bare bones tutorial. There's like more shit that you can learn, but this is like as much as you need to get started with animating for FNF. So I hope that was a little helpful. Uh, again, it got to 13 minutes, damn. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 the tutorial. That 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 